Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Kirby Smart doing what Kirby Smart does best, and that's build incredible high school recruiting classes. Landing another commit in Jaden Riddell from the state of Missouri. He is one of the best tight ends in the class. You take a look at what he brings to the table. It makes a lot of sense why Kirby wanted him in Athens. And it also makes a lot of sense why Jaden Riddell wants to go play his college football in Athens when you look at how they use their tight ends, how they develop their tight ends in the past. It's truly becoming tight end you. Going to talk a little bit about Jaden Riddell, but a lot of y'all said, where is the Georgia coverage, right? We've been talking a lot of high school recruiting. Haven't really touched on the Georgia Bulldogs. They might be in the process of building the best class that we have ever seen in 2024. So I want to talk a little bit about Jaden Riddell, but I want to get into who they've had on campus, who they're going to have on campus, and what could this 2024 class look right and look like if everything goes well for Kirby Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs. Now, before we get into it again, just want to say thank you to you guys. Just the the, the amount of support from all the college football teams as we talk recruiting, as we talk to transfer portal, truly does mean a lot. We're getting into our summer scout and kind of going over all these Power 5 teams a little bit more in depth. So can't thank you guys enough. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Let's get into Jaden Riddell first, and then I want to talk about what this Georgia class could look like in 2024. You talk about a tight end. What do you want in a tight end? You want the size. You want the speed. You want someone who's too big for defensive backs to deal with and too fast for linebackers to deal with. You want the matchup nightmare. That's exactly what Jaden Riddell brings to the table. You look at his Twitter bio, he boasts a 4-4-1 40-yard dash. Now, I don't know if that's a verified time. It actually is not a verified time. I checked. But you see on the film, he's pretty damn fast. And so even if he's not running a 4-4-1, which would be extraordinary for a guy going into a senior year of high school, it is truly impressive what he brings to the table in terms of the size and speed and athleticism and body control, quite frankly. I mean, this dude put up over a 1,000 yards receiving as a junior. I'm sure he's going to do it as a senior. And it makes a lot of sense why Kirby kind of, when you lost Landon Thomas to Florida State, turned up the heat on Jaden Riddell. I, I would have a feeling that, any tight end Georgia wanted, if you turned up the heat on, they'd be coming to Athens. Because if you're a tight end, you're a top tight end in this class, you want to go play for Georgia because you've seen what they've done with their tight ends. Darnell Washington, Brock Bauer is going to be a top 10 pick. Oscar Dell probably going to be a first round pick when he's draft eligible. It's a special, special offense for tight ends. How they use tight ends, I'm sure, is very appealing for a guy like Jaden Riddell because it's not just, hey, we're going to stick you in line and block. You're going to be asked to block. Don't get me wrong on that. But you're, we're going to ask you to be an athlete. We're going to ask you to be a difference maker, a playmaker. That's really appealing to these really special athletes coming out of high school who are playing the tight end position. So you got a good one here. But I want to kind of move on towards what could this class really look like? You have Dylan Raiola in the fold. You have 15 commits already in this class. It's the number one class. I don't really see it leaving the number one class. What I want to ask the question is, can this be the best class that we've ever seen? We saw Texas A&M absolutely crush it a, a few years back and then lost a lot of those guys in the transfer portal. Georgia, not really having as much of a problem losing guys in the portal. You're going to lose some because when you bring in as much talent as Georgia does, like a lot of these guys could be playing a lot of other spots. So you're going to lose some guys in the portal. But Georgia's done a phenomenal job keeping those guys. They're trusting the process of Kirby Smart and what he brings, and they have every reason to do that getting into Georgia and what they could have. You have Dylan Raiola, and it does seem to be like a little bit of that Arch Manning effect from last year in the 2023 class where Arch Manning commits to Texas. All the top athletes, all the top prospects, whether you're playing offense, whether you're playing defense, start taking a look at Texas. I think you're going to see a very similar kind of thing with Dylan Raiola committing to Georgia, but the, the, the good thing for Georgia fans is they were already looking at Georgia. And so now Dylan Raiola is sitting there locked into the 2024 class just makes it even more enticing for some of these top guys, especially on the offensive side of the ball, to say, hey, this is going to be a phenomenal offense with one of the more generationally talented quarterbacks in Dylan Ryle already committed. Let's take a look at who might be coming on the offensive side of the ball, and let's start with the number two player in the class, Jeremiah Smith. Uh, from what the scouts say, like one of the most talented wide receivers that we've seen coming out of high school – he was on campus um, with Dylan Raiola this weekend. You saw him at the throwing session. He's taken a strong – I mean, he's committed to Ohio State. I'm sure Georgia fans, excuse me, know that. He's been taking a look at Florida. But I, he committed to Ohio State when Dylan Raiola was committed to Ohio State. He's said on record that he's very interested in playing with Dylan Raiola. And now he seems to be taking a long look 
at the Georgia Bulldogs. And that's something, I mean, there's not much to, to, to drag Kirby smart about, but maybe recruiting on the offensive side of the ball, getting that, like that top notch star power, maybe has been something he's kind of missed out on. If Kirby smart, can land the number one quarterback in the class, the number one player in the country, and then Jeremiah Smith, the number two player in the class, the number one wide receiver in the country, this class could really, really be special. A couple other wide receivers that I'd kind of just keep an eye on here that you're going to be having on campus. You already have Nykar, a top 100 wide receiver, already committed. Jaden Riddell, one of the best tight ends, already committed. But let's take a look at who they're going to be having on campus Friday, June 2nd, because you have a guy in Ryan Wingo, the second best, or depending on the service, he's been second best wide receiver on some services. On three has him as the number five wide receiver in this class. He'll be on campus. That is another top target. Ryan Wingo has taken visits with Dylan Raiola to Nebraska. He's, he's clearly kind of made an emphasis that, yeah, I want to play with Dylan Raiola. And again, when you have the number one quarterback, a guy so talented like Dylan Raiola, the offensive firepower is going to gravitate. He's a guy that's leaning Georgia from what the kind of uh, the experts have said. He's from Missouri as well. So I would keep an eye on that. You have Jared Gibson, the second best running back in the class uh, from IMG Academy. Also taking a look at Georgia. The, the offensive firepower, certainly there. Carter Nelson is an interesting one. He has got massive bump according to 24-7 Sports. Up to the top 50 national recruit um, according to 24-7 Sports. Really special athlete. I wonder if they take three tight ends because they already took two. So I don't know uh, if they're going to be able to get him in the fold. But again, a guy that taking an official visit the same weekend Dylan Raiola is, you know Dylan Raiola is going to be working his tail off to get another playmaker like Carter Nelson from the state of Nebraska to come down to Athens. But I, as much firepower as they're going to be able to get on the offensive side of the ball with a guy like Dylan Raiola already in the fold, the defense is something that, Kirby Smart said no problem getting, getting top talent. And you can't blame him. You look at the amount of defensive players that Kirby Smart's been able to put out into the NFL. It's truly staggering. The guys that they'll be having on campus with Dylan Raiola, June 2nd, it is very exciting if you're Georgia fans. And you got to think that Georgia swings a big stick when it comes to specifically the front seven in the defensive line. Like that is just like we said, tight end you it, it is, is Georgia. Defensive line U is quickly becoming Georgia as well, whether you're playing the inside, whether you're playing the outside, because you saw the amount of draft picks they put into the first round the last couple of years, Jordan Davis, Nolan Smith, Jalen Carter, Devontae Wyatt. Guys want to go play for Georgia because they know how they're going to get developed. Williams and Maneri, a top 10 national prospect from Missouri as well. Georgia really attacking the state of Missouri. Justin Scott right now trending towards Miami, but you got to think that if Georgia wants to turn up the heat on a guy like Justin Scott, he's going to take a long look. He's another top 10 prospect. And then Dylan Stewart, a guy that on three has him as the number one overall prospect, 24 seven sports. I think he's sitting at number 10 nationally. You're looking at three guys who are bona fide top 10 prospects in this class, all taking official visits on the same weekend. And Hey, even if you don't land two of them, but you're able to land one of them. I mean, that is something that is, could be really, really special for Georgia. The next guy I want to talk about who's seemingly trending to Georgia, K.J. Bolden, an in-state kid. This is another guy that it just makes too much sense. Uh, as much as we talked about the front seven, Georgia's done a damn good job developing everyone on the defense side of the football. He plays his high school ball at Buford. He's a top 10 national prospect. And another one, just an in-state kid that would just make too much sense for the Georgia Bulldogs not to land. And so you're suddenly looking at, Georgia, who already has, you take a look at, we'll take a look at who they have already locked in their 2024 class. They have the number one prospect in the country, Dylan Raiola. Alice Robinson, who I know they're fighting Miami still for, still committed to Georgia, top five national prospect. It's not crazy to think Georgia finishes this cycle with four guys in the top 10. Whether it's Raiola, Robinson, KJ Bolden, Williams, Emanary, Justin Scott. I know David Stone's taking a look, look at Georgia as well. At the amount of talent that they're kind of have the inside um, inside spot on or inside lane on. I'm trying to go for a track reference here, a little out of my element. But the amount of guys that they're kind of leading for in the clubhouse, go back to golf, something I know a little bit better, it is truly remarkable. And you're taking a look at a, a Georgia class in 2024 that could be the best class that we've ever seen. And I don't even think we touched on a lot of the guys that are still considering Georgia. 
I just wanted to talk about some of the top 10, top 15 nationally ranked dudes that are taking a look at Georgia. This class could be massive. They're already back-to-back national champs winning sells. Like players want to go be around excellence. They want to go win football games and want to win it on the biggest stage. Georgia's been doing that the last two years. And another thing that I, I kind of want to talk about with Georgia is everything I read about prospects and how they, what they think of Georgia is just the, the practices. I hear like they, they love the energy in the practices. They love the competitiveness of practices. And another thing Kirby Smart's done a phenomenal job of is just surrounding himself with phenomenal staff, phenomenal recruiters. I mean, you look up and down the offensive line, the defensive line, the secondary, the wide receiver coaches, those guys are all heads of their field in recruiting. And that's why they're bringing in these classes. They know they're going to develop guys at a high level. That's already proven. Georgia is slowly kind of building a juggernaut of a program. And, and you take a look, and I don't want to have the GOAT talk yet, but if there's a coach around the country right now that I would take to coach my Michigan Wolverines, and I love Jim Harbaugh. This is nothing against Jim Harbaugh. It's Kirby Smart. And it's just the, the how he's running this program right now is truly special. Um, I think we're going to see a special, special 2024 class. So Georgia fans, Get excited because this one could be special again. I know we don't talk as much Georgia football as you want, but if you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas, and we'll talk to y'all later.